Hi developers, in this video we'll learn how to deploy applications into Kubernetes using Helm. Helm is defined as the package manager for Kubernetes. It makes deploying applications to Kubernetes really easy and configurable. It still uses the manifest files defined for Kubernetes, but it makes those files configurable. So we'll have a package that contains those files, but in a conf with a configuration that we can apply to those files. For example, if we want to deploy uh, Sonar onto our Kubernetes cluster, then we need to create the manifest files that describes the web app, the database, the config maps, the secret keys, the uh, services, and so on. Now with Helm, we'll have all those manifest files created and defined into a package so that when we want to deploy Sonar, then we just deploy this package that contains all the um, application described uh, into YAML files. And we still, of course, can make some changes to those uh, or to this package. Helm gives the ability to uh, specify a file that can contain all the configuration for the application. For example, the number of replica, the port numbers, and so on. So Helm makes it easy to deploy, but also to share the application. Helm is one of the projects packed by Cloud Native Computing Foundation. If we go to the list of their projects here, we can see Kubernetes, but we also can see Helm as one of the projects supported by CNCF. Helm is also an open source project, which you can find it in GitHub right here. So let's take a look at how it does work. I'll go to my application that I have built using ISP.NET. It's an MVC application and here I have defined all the YAML uh, manifest files for Kubernetes. So for this app, I have those files. Let's learn how we can make this um, application into a Helm package so that we can deploy it to Kubernetes. Here I have created a charts folder. It contains a product store, but let's see how we can create a chart. But before that, we need to install Helm on our machine. The installation depends on your OS you are using. Here we have in the docs, it describes how you can install it on your OS. If you are using Linux, then you need to run this command. If you are using Mac OS like me, then you can use brew install kubernetes-helm to install it. You can also install it on Windows using this command. We have in the same guide, the other options for the install and also we have uh, it shows how we can install it on the server. It's called a uh, tiller. I'll go and install Helm in my macOS machine. For that, I need to use the command brew install kubernetes-helm. And here it tells me that it is already installed because I have run this command before starting the demo. Now that we have Helm installed, now let's get started by creating our first Helm chart. To do that, let's understand here our existing uh, MVC application. So here I have my application and here I have the source code. I have defined the Docker uh, file for that app so that I have now a Docker container hosted on Docker Hub. And here I have created all the manifest Kubernetes files to run my Docker Hub that contains the web app. But and that's defined in my MVC deployment.azure, where here I have all the information needed to retrieve that Docker container from a Docker Hub. Like here, the, my uh, Docker Hub ID, the Docker, um, the Docker container uh, name, then uh, the specified tag. And we have also some other information like the port number and so on. We have another deployment for the MS SQL um, database, which here will be uh, it's using Microsoft SQL Server database hosted on a Docker container. So here I have all the information needed to run that uh, container. We have also defined some other values for the persistent volume that we'll use on a, a disk on Azure. 
then we have the config map and secret files that needs to be deployed with the um, entire application so this means when i want to deploy my application then i need to deploy all those yaml manifest files it would be really nice to use a package that defines all those files together and if i want to change some values defined in those uh, files right here then i will have a central um, file from which i can configure my package so let's do that using the helm packages here i have added a new folder contains contains a, f um, a folder called products store which contains my helm chart let's take a look but just after we see how we can create this uh, folder so let's start by creating a sample a chart using the command line. For that right here, I'll go and open a terminal in uh, VS Code. So I'll go and say new terminal. And from here, I need to CD into my charts folder. And then right here, I'll use the command helm create and we'll call our chart a sample chart. This one will create a chart for us. So if I type enter right here, it says creating sample chart and here it added a new folder into my charts folder, which is here, the sample chart. So this, this is the basic form of a Helm chart. Let's see the files that it have created. First of all, we'll take a look at the chart.yaml. This one will contains the information about the package. Think of it as the manifest for the package. So we have the version numbers specified, a description for what this package does, and the name, and also the version for each uh, release. Another file is the values.yaml. If we take a look at this file right here, then we can see it defines some key value pairs. So the first one right here is replica count. It's set to one. Then it defines some values for uh, image. Here it says the repository will be using the nginx Docker container as a sample. Then we have the tag stable. Then we have some other uh, values defined as well for the ingress um, and some others for if we, that we can add and we can define them into the resources to specify the limits and the requests for each uh, container. Those values will be used by the template. For that here, it generated another folder, which is the templates. If we open it, then we can find that here we have the known form of uh, Kubernetes objects. So here we have a deployment.yaml, which is exactly a kubernetes a manifest file it's of type or of kind deployment but here with we can see that we have some special syntax right here inside this file those are all valuables that will be um, defined or that will be edited when deploying the package this means this value right here it will be changed to the value specified by values dot replica count but where we can see this value if you remember well in the values folder which is defined right here by dot values we have seen a variable called replica count that is the same value defined right here it have a value of one this means right here the replica it will have a value of one when we deploy the package so when we deploy the package, all those entire values, they will be, their values will be substituted by values defined in values.yaml. So if I want to change some parameters inside this package or to change some configuration, then a central way to do it is to do that from the yaml.yaml files right here. We have some other values that didn't define values from the values uh, file. Here it uses the dot release and those are will be defined during the deployment of the package. So for each release we'll have a name and a service. We have some other values also that not defined not in release and not also in uh, values all of those we can configure them 
to um, to make our packages configurable so that anyone who wants to deploy this package he can personalize it and configure it as he wants. The same principle goes to the ingress controller right here where we have the full name define it and the variables uh, we can see that here it uses the um, variables coming from the values ingress annotations and so on so it makes all the manifest files configurable the same for the service as well in addition to those files we have a tpl file right here which uh, defines the naming conventions we use and also configures how we name our uh, objects we have also nodes.txt which have some comments for how you can use um, or how you can config add uh, other configurations to your package we also have here helm ignore helm ignore contains the configuration for the files that needs to be inside the package and which files doesn't need to be inside the deployable package think of it as the git ignore for uh, github so this is the simple form of a template now i have applied this uh, principle to my um, to the template that i have created which will be applied to those uh, or to my uh, existing application that's the products store folder right here i have the values dot yaml and here i have edited that um, those values i have added some other new values like the namespace right here because i want to deploy my application into a new namespace in my kubernetes cluster i have defined a variable namespace which take the value helm dash namespace then I have some variable values for my web and my SQL containers. For my web, I have the image, Docker Hub ID, the name of my image, the tag, and so on. And inside my template, I'll be referencing those variables inside the deployment files. So if I go to the MVC deployment right here, then here we can see that from uh, right here from the containers section, I'm referencing the name of my docker hub id then i'm referencing also the image name and the image tag and i apply the same principle for the other variables like the port number the uh, namespace this one i apply it to all my um, kubernetes manifest files like here the ms sql deployment which will deploy the sql server inside a docker container so here I'm saying that the namespace will be using the same namespace defined inside the YAML dot, um, uh, inside the values.yaml file. Great, now that we have our template or our Helm chart, code source is uh, ready. Now we are ready to deploy this chart. To deploy a chart, we need to create a package. And to, to create a package, we need to run a simple command line. So let's open a new terminal right here. Let's cd again inside the charts folder. And let's run the command that will create the chart. The command is helm package. Then we need to specify the name of the package right here. It's my products store folder. So I see products. And here it tells me that the package was created successfully and it's the one uh, added right here. It's, um, it uses the TGZ um, extension uh, naming. So that's, that's going to be the package that I need to deploy in our, and that will deploy all those YAML files. Now we are ready to deploy that package. To do that, I'll go to the command window right here. And from here, I'll run the command helm install the name of my package, which I call it right here, products store. Let's run this command. 
and here it generated all those uh, Kubernetes uh, objects right here it started by deploying by creating a deployment for my MVC um, Docker container then it created the uh, namespace which is called Helm namespace and then created the config map the storage class the persistent volume the deployment for my MS SQL and so on now if I go and take a look at my Kubernetes cluster right here I'm inside the helm namespace. here I have nothing but if I go to refresh to get the new deployed objects then here I find that the um, application was deployed um, to my Kubernetes cluster it was not deployed successfully because right here I have this error saying pod has unbound persisting volume claims I can't this is because my docker container for MS SQL it references or it needs a natural disk to be provisioned before starting the, the container but unfortunately the um, container starts um, after creating the uh, disk for that I have this error we can solve this uh, kind of errors inside the uh, helm package by defining a script that will wait until the Azure disk is created after that it will start the Kubernetes the uh, co um, container for this uh, image but for now to solve this issue I'll just go and scale it to uh, zero hit OK so this will kill that uh, container so here I have one on zero then I'll go to uh, scale it again to a one so this means my uh, container will run uh, again and this time it will find the Azure disk uh, created this will take a bit of time to start and now I can see that my app now uh, should be deployed uh, successfully like we have defined a package for our sample application the community have also defined packages for their applications and they are really useful ones so to go and see those uh, packages created by the community you can go to this github repo for the um, official helm uh, github repo right here and go to charts and from here you can see many useful uh, charts the one i use a lot is uh, jenkins for example so here we have um, a package for jenkins and also we have another package for sonar uh, cube when you try to install sonar cube manually using the uh, kubernetes deployment files that might um, take a bit of time to configure all the objects all the dependencies between objects and so on but using the helm deployment uh, or using helm packages right here it's just running helm install sonar cube and then you are ready to, uh, you will get immediately Sonar Cube installed successfully in your Kubernetes cluster. I will leave you with this uh, article that I have created in Medium, where here I have written uh, a blog that defines how you can install Kuber uh, Helm in your machine, how you create the chart. It's uh, almost everything we have saw in this video. You can find it in this uh, article. I want to share with you that the source code for the app that we have used today is published on GitHub. So if you go to this repo, you can find the source code for the app in addition to the charts um, helm that we have uh, created today.